how'd you get you something else? How'd you get into it? And so I worked construction in the beginning, and it was just inertia. I didn't have a lot of choices, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. And uh, that's what I did and began to do a little bit of development. And then in, uh, and then in 87, the company I was working for laid me off. And I went to Roger and asked him to be my partner and basically put a little money in to see if I could get a deal put together. Also at that time, around about that time, I read the two books that most influenced my life, which is Death and Life of Great mm -hmm. American Cities and uh, Christopher Alexander's mm -hmm. book, Pattern Language. Two of my favorite books. Yeah, they're yeah. just Love them. great books. They Refer were eye-opening for me. I just turned my daughter on to yeah. um, the, uh, uh, the the Death and Life of a Great yeah, American yeah. City. I've yeah. I've given many people copies of Pattern Language. And, and of course, yeah. you know, Jane Jacobs was not a trained professional. Yeah. She wasn't an architect. Yeah. She was just an observer of the human condition. But anyway, I read these two great books, and like we were just talking about, everything had been overbuilt. There was there was no gap, no no need not met. And as far as development, and especially in what we were doing, which was housing, I mean, it was eye-poppingly oversupplied. Mm -hmm. But nobody had been doing urban, right? And so that was the big idea. Not that everyone would love it, but that there would be uh, some number of people. What year was this? This was 87. So this was uh, 23 years ago. Yeah. No, no. Uh, 33 years yeah. ago. And uh, way ahead of the movement that we see in downtown now oh we didn't we didn't have the language yeah. okay as you know the whole urbanism language yeah, didn't exist urbanism. and you just kind of had to kind of make it up and reference things like that other great cities and walkable and you know mix of use and all of that we ended up starting in uptown with 132 units and uh, that stayed in thomas uh, state and allen Mm -hmm. That was my very first project. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a project done. And uh, uh, we had Japanese equity because there's nobody in Texas had any money. So we literally, the equity in that was from Japan to get that project done. Mm -hmm. And then we just, within a fairly short period of time, we did 12 projects. You in think uptown. of the, uh, the, you know, transformation of Uptown. When, when I came here, that State Thomas Historic District was all houses. There, there wasn't a multifamily thing to be had. So I was reading some of uh, you had written, I think, for D Magazine, uh, and you're talking about some of the, the great neighborhoods of cities uh, around the country, uh, Denver, Pittsburgh, et cetera, but you didn't mention Uptown. Yeah, well, I guess my, I, I, I use those cities when I, think about, um, you know, and people now talk about new urbanism. And uh, um, uh, I, I don't know what context, you know, what, what you read, what context that was in. But those cities you mentioned, they have um, neighborhoods that grew organically, naturally, the way <clears throat> a successful, connected urban life mm -hmm. can grow, partly because they had the good fortune of growing when we didn't have the automobile when there wasn't the, right. the, the um, mobility to get away. Streetcar so, community. So when I go back to those Rust Belt towns that did, in, you know, New York and mm -hmm. Boston, and we talk about Jane Jacobs, and you think about, you know, her rallying against Moses driving a freeway right. through the, the village. Um, you can live in New York in, in the village and not get out of the village sure. all your life, really. You could. Right. Right? You could live in that little area, and it's, it's all walkable, but they had the good fortune of developing that density when they had to. Right. They didn't have, you know, they weren't going to get in a car. The mm -hmm. car hadn't even been invented yet when that city w or in that neighborhood was growing up. So I bring those to light because Uptown is sort of a rebirth of that. Right. And uh, We always said we have to look back yeah. to go forward. Yeah.